Nigeria is a great country blessed with abundant natural and human resources. These resources, if properly harnessed, should make the country's economy stronger than it is today. Corruption is one of the major reasons why the country is still witnessing setbacks in many areas of its economic sphere. Let's join us to say no to corruption for a greater Nigeria. Hello and welcome to the program, The Eagle, a weekly program showcasing the activities of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and produced by the Public Affairs Department of the Commission. I am Aisha Mohammed. Corruption is a kanka wamu wo, na kanka wamu wo. I say na kanka wamu wo, na kanka wamu. Corruption don't finish our country. Nigeria women rise up and come together. Oh, oh yeah. Every woman come out, we go fight corruption together. Oh, every woman fall out, we go kill corruption together. Oh, and they thief our money. Ah, send them more bodo ibo. Children they suffer every day. Better school in no day. Nigeria women come, oh. women from every sector. Make we fight corruption. We won't kill our country. Them go collect money for light. Chop the money, light we no see. Good road and good health and come. We no see. I said na kaka wam Join the EFCC in its crusade to rid Nigeria of corruption. Niger. Now we all know. We begin the program with a special report on value reorientation as a viable tool in checking the meanings of corruption. Positive moral values, they say, are important in our day-to-day -day activities. Apart from giving meaning and purpose to our lives, having good moral means you are able to channel your behavior towards a beneficial and fulfilling conduct everywhere you find yourself. Despite measures put in place to check the meanings of corruption, the increasing rate of corruption incidences in our society is becoming very frightening as the perpetrators have become unrepentant. Can value reorientation play a role in checking the minas? Does the family have a role to play in the fight against corruption? In this next report, we take a look at value reorientation as a tool in fighting corruption. Please stay tuned. According to an online article by essaylibrary.com, Incorporating the moral value of honesty in your life makes you trustworthy. You will have a clear conscience because you can respect yourself. The people that you come into contact with will all be able to count on you to be fair and sincere. Your integrity will allow you to advance in both your personal and professional life. There are more opportunities for you to fully experience life when you are an honest person. The issue of integrity brings us to the minas of corruption. A lot of Nigerians are no longer concerned about their integrity, which is evident in the way and manner public fund is being looted for private gains. Corruption, as many would say, is endemic in Nigeria. Everywhere we go, the minas tears us in the face. Poverty is also as a result of corruption because funds meant for developmental purposes are being diverted for private gains. The federal government had since recognized those many problems and so established various agencies to combat corruption, some of which are the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Code of Conduct Bureau, amongst others, with each having its separate laws. Apart from the laws enacted to fight corruption, can value reorientation be a tool in checking the spread of corruption? The Eagle team were again on the streets of Abuja to sample people's opinion on this. Some of the respondents have this to say. The parents should teach their children the right thing. First of all, when they send their children to school, they should let them know that they should study and pass their exams by themselves. That whatever they do, they have to they have to earn it on merit because I believe some parents are the ones that allow their children to go into all these corrupt practices, malpractices. They even pay the teachers, you know, buy question papers to allow these children to move further, to move to the next level. And these children, they are assimilating all these things and they know that their parents are doing this for them and they can continue with it because what your parents are doing and you are doing it, nobody will caution you about it. 
Uh, what I see in this thing uh, is all about the family, parents. It's the way you brought up your children that they will, they will, they will also move elsewhere outside. Uh, we parents, we need to impact some things in our children. You, you need to teach them before any other thing. You're supposed to be the teacher, the real teacher. You have to teach your children what to do and what... You have to educate them to know the bad and the good thing in our country. I am suggesting that we will start from home. Because home is the beginning of the whole thing. If you have a good family value, you will not be involved in the violence. You will not be involved in stealing. But because we have lost our family value, that is why Nigeria is going the way they are going. Just let take for instance, in UNN, there is a child who the friends ask him to join an association. They call it one name, but the child came home and tell the father, say, my friend asked me to join one association called the court. But the father, because the child was so close to the father, that was why he's able to disclose to the father. I am now advocating that parents should be close to their children and have time for them. The beginning of the whole disruption in this country started from home because a lot of parents are not at home. They don't know who to associate with their children. They don't know how they go out and how they come in. They don't even know how they eat because they are looking for material things. They need an orientation from the family, reorientation, and to educate them values, spiritual values, not ordinary uh, moral values alone spiritual values and when they know what it takes for a man and a woman to stay as one centered on God then their lifestyle will change they will now think of God first and when they are thinking of God they will not be corrupted in their heart another thing for this corruption of a thing if you teach your children how to struggle how to just don't look don't relent don't uh, don't look what other people are doing that is bad. Just focus attention on what you are doing. Teaching children how to struggle. Maybe after education, they will learn, they will do other things to at least to keep life going. The, the children will not look back. They will know that maybe after secondary school education, either you learn trade or you learn how to how tra you learn how to sew machine or carpentry work, or other things, be contented with what they have. Children will follow suit. But a situation where you parents are not doing anything, tomorrow you bring this, you bring this one, bring, children will ask questions. Daddy or mommy, where? You say, don't worry. You have to tell your children where you are getting all those things. It's from my, my shop. It's from uh, this my workshop. It's from this way. Or uh, from a mechanic that uh, we get this one. Children will know that they will have to struggle, fight, Lentings so that tomorrow they will be okay. I think we are the role model to our children. It starts from the mother. Understand? You, as a mother, you have to present yourself in a way that the child will not regret it in life. You understand? You inculcate things in the child that are positive. You don't. You don't fight. You don't fight in your child's presence, you understand? There are some things you don't say, like making call, you begin to lie, and your child is there watching. Before you know it, he sees it as a normal thing. The young people are often referred to as the future of the world. The future of our country depends upon the moral values impacted on them when they are young. So children have an immense power of observation, and their feelings are deep-rooted. They always observe their parents at home and their teachers in school. For this reason, some respondents called on parents to be good examples to their words. I think it should be a kind of general sensitization from the family, it should be taught to the children, and then immediately they get to school because it starts even at the nursery level. You leave your own food, you go to take another person's food, that is corrupt practice. So at that level, it shouldn't be taught at a, as a course, but as a kind of uh, instilling values 
the children. And then for the general society, there should be massive um, awareness campaign about it. Because the, some people that are indulged in corruption and corrupt practices may not even know that what they are doing is injurious to their own persons and the society as a whole. So the government should, through the arms already in place, bring out a you know, campaign that will sensitize people on the need to stay away from corrupt practices. If you have your children at home, you need to tell them how to manage the money that you have. That is to be content with what they have. They should not spend more than what your parents has at home. Then you show them, you also tell them that anything that they know you're capable of doing for them, they should be contented with, with it. They should not go outside and be looking at their friends, some, somebody else outside that their mommy come and buy this thing for me. I saw some these social things in my friend's uh, place, I want to have it. No, you have to teach your children what you can do for them, they should accept you. Anything you can afford to them, they should accept you like that. The process of learning for a child is not magical. It is important that we instill the sound base of strong moral values in our children. Moral values are extremely important for everyone's overall well-being. It provides a structure for our lives. We should all work towards a better Nigeria by imbibing in good conduct and instilling discipline and good morals in our children. Honesty makes you respectable. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Fraud Related Offences Act 2006 says, When any person who by any false pretense and with the intent to defraud obtains for himself or any other person by false pretense, that person has committed advanced fee fraud. On today's edition of the program, we have a special report again which seeks to take a look at the meanings of advanced fee fraud. This journey of fraud, otherwise known as 419 in the Nigerian parlance, got its name from Section 419 of the Nigerian Constitution, which describes the crime. In this report, Ronlaikia Odofin Jolayemi will bring to you a blow-by-blow -blow account of how the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC is waging war against the incidences of advanced fee fraud. Over to you, Ronlaikia. The incidences of advanced fee fraudsters, also known as 419 in Nigeria, before the advent of the EFCC, was such a sorry situation as many Nigerians and even foreigners with genuine business proposals ended up falling victims of fraud, with some not only losing investments but also their lives. The fraudsters employ different tactics to trick their victims. This type of fraud describes cases in which criminal fraudsters convince the victim to partake in a business which they mostly present as genuine but which is not. There are several types of advanced fee fraud. They include career opportunity scams, clairvoyance or psychic scams, check overpayment fraud, dating or romance scams, fraud recovery fraud and identity theft. Others are inheritance fraud, loan scams, lottery and sweepstakes scams. Whatever form it takes, it usually begins with a fraudster presenting a profit or reward gaining venture to the victim. The aim of every proposal from a fraudster is to strip the victim of his possessions either in monetary form or in property form. Clairvoyance or psychic scam is one form of advanced fee fraud known as juju scam in the Nigerian parlance. The apparently psychic or clairvoyant fraudsters approach their victims by email, post, telephone call or even face-to-face -face contact. 
When total strangers approach you with stories that they have seen something wonderful or terrible about your future, you may not need any other tale that you are being lined up to be fleeced. They may claim to be able to give you winning lottery numbers or offer to remove a curse or a spell. The tales deployed as baits for victims are many. Some claim to possess powers that can heal or provide remedy to certain ailments. They may also tell you that you are in some kind of trouble, but a solution is within reach. Some even go as far as telling you they can produce currency notes or that they have some marked notes somewhere and they need money to buy chemicals to wash it. A demo operation is carried out in which the Mugu, as they call their victim, is taken through the motion of a paper being washed to become hard currency, often the US dollar. The process usually ends with the victim being told to help source for money to purchase the expensive chemical for a cut of the deal. This form of scam is common in Nigeria, with many victims losing lifetime investments to fraudsters. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, waged into the war against this genre of fraud in 2005 after the commission unraveled a huge incidence of fraud in which a Brazilian bank was defrauded of over 200,000 US dollars by a fraud syndicate led by Emmanuel Umudi. The commission arrested the syndicate and recovered the money which was restituted to the victim, the Brazilian bank. Not relenting in its efforts to rid the country of activities of fraudsters, operatives of the commission have continued to arrest notorious fraudster syndicates who had defrauded a number of innocent victims of money and other valuables. Friday Ebelo is the head of the Advanced Fee Fraud Unit of the EFCC. The conceptualization of the EFCC um, can be traced to the minutes of the Advanced Fee Fraud, and, and that, is where, that is why one of the reasons why the EFCC was actually born, and um, um, we have achieved a lot of successes. There's still a lot of room for improvement. And uh, we've come a long way. Uh, if, we are, if, we, if we have to place a record from inception to date, we'll be talking over 5,000 convictions from the advance with fraud alone. How can one avoid being a victim of EFF? So the circumspective one, uh, you just have to ask yourself some basic question. Uh, you don't need a rocket science to you don't need to be taught in the classroom that these are the lessons, these are the way to avoid this, but you just have to ask yourself some basic questions. Why am I the person that this fellow is calling that, oh, this kind of investment is in town? Uh, or I, there's an inheritance that I need to inherit from one person or the other. Why, was, why must it be me? Um, what I always tell my, the victims that come around that we assist here, I tell them that um, if it's too good, then there's a red flag. If the interest, if the amount, if the returns and in investment is too high, there's a red flag. You, you don't you just, um, just, you don't just, it's not something like you do an impulse kind of reaction or no. You need to ask yourself when you see some of these phishing mail come to you or some of these unsolicited messages come to you, you don't just start giving your personal details. No, you get, you just have to sit down and ask yourself some basic questions. Um, why am I the one this person sending this person to? And most time, most of these informations are given by friends or close associates to the guy that's the scammers. So um, they have a kind of a background, they have done a kind of background check on you. So they can give you, maybe if you have a nickname when you are growing up, they can call you by that nickname. That will take you off balance and say that, oh, this person might have some inkling about me. What can be done if one becomes a victim? You need to discuss with a professional. You need to, if you are in any of our cities where we have any of our office, you need to meet, reach out to any ESCC office, officer. Uh, if they can attend to you, they will bring it to us. And in coming to us, we will be able to ask you one or two questions and advise prefer solutions on how to go about it. Uh, we can even still put you on, on how to relay with these schemas, scammers. Uh, so as to see how we can effect their arrest. Ade Jari Kembi is a legal practitioner. He speaks about the trend of advance fee fraud and the legal perspectives to spiritualism. The law has made provisions. First and foremost, let me say that um, if we make a false uh, a presentation or representation, that is what we call obtaining under false pretenses. So it is, that it, it is an avenue, but it is criminal. However, the law makes provision 
under what we call money had and received. It is applicable in contract cases. It is also applicable in criminal instances where you have made a promise to me on, on, uh, upon which I have changed my position and money had passed. Where that promise is not kept, I have the right to sue you in civil uh, courses to recover that money. Some people say the law does not recognize voodoo or juju. Is it the same with you? We are wrong in saying that the law does not recognize juju. The criminal could actually make provisions for such a circumstance. So the law recognizes juju. It does. However, where the juju is used for criminal purposes, the law again makes provision either for the, uh, for the uh, suspect to be tried that is when we uh, talk about um, going through ordeal. Uh, the law makes provision for trial by ordeal and so on, which is a format where even a man who believes in juju says, for instance, I have caught a witch, right, and puts the poor girl or boy through such a serious situation that the law does not expect. That um, juju man is liable for trial under the trial by ordeal uh, provisions of the criminal code. So we actually have provisions that have adequately provided for such. And don't forget, that criminal code is over 100 years old. So if you realize that 100 years ago, we have made provisions for such, and it is still valid now, how can we say that we did not recognize Juju or we did not make provisions for such a situation? We have. How can evidence be established in cases involving spiritual fraud? Simple. No man we lay emphasis on spiritualism as a means of deceit without having something to show for it. Either a shrine, a, uh, um, a, a concocted place where something is said to go on. Those are the evidences that you need to prove to show that, look, this man has shown me this as a basis upon which I parted with money, I parted with property, right? However, even the um, Evidence Act had even made it a little bit simpler now by virtue of the recent um, amendment that was made. All you need is a picture or a recording of such and a certificate from the hand of the person who did the recording. So you are no longer required to carry the shrine to the court because, in fact, sometimes you know Nigerians for what we are, even if the judge sees the shrine, the judge might run. Do you think Nigerians have tendencies to be spiritual individuals? We do. We do. From the presidency to the laborer, all of us tend to be spiritual in one way or the other. And that spirituality marks our action, whether positively or negatively. Section 2 of the Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Fraud-Related Offenses Act 2006 gives power to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to arrest, investigate, and prosecute advanced fee fraud offenders. The Act states that a person who with intent to defraud represents himself as possessing the power or as capable of doubling or otherwise increasing any sum of money through scientific or any other medium of invocation of any juju or other invisible entity, or of anything whatsoever, commits an offence and is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term not more than 15 years and not less than 5 years without the option of a fine. Rolake Odofin Jolaimi, reporting for The Eagle. Corruption is dishonesty and illegal behaviour by people in positions of trust. A public office is a public trust. Do not abuse positions of trust for private gains. Stay away from corruption. Nigeria is a great nation and it is our responsibility to make the country greater. If you notice any act of corruption, please report to the EFCC via info at efccnigeria.org or call 09-904-4751 or 09-904-4752. You can also call 09-904-4753. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. 
And that's how we have come to the end of today's episode of The Eagle. You too can be part of this program by sending your inquiries and suggestions to the eagle at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official EFCC or official EFCC ng at gmail.com. You can like our page on facebook.com forward slash official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. And of course, you can visit our page on Instagram at official EFCC. To watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Always remember that a public